It's the Score North Twin Show. Baseball! I think it's it's worthy of the breaking news sounder. Yeah. Kind of kind of came out of nowhere. Alex Kirilov, what, 27 years old, announced his retirement from the Twins in Major League Baseball today. And uh, we'll get to Judd's baseball take of the day. We have Twins on the grid here, too. But, yeah, Dex, you were on a call with Alex Kirilov like an hour, hour and a half ago. What did he have to say? I mean, kind of, I mean he's been, like, battling injuries and yeah. wrist and back and all this stuff and shoulder but it's when you see a guy that was once one of the best prospects in baseball retire before basically playing his age 27 season, kind of a shocker. Totally. Um, I mean, yeah, so he dealt with a back issue this year. He dealt with the wrist issue with, I mean, he had part of his wrist shaved off, <sighs> you know, like that. That's, that's crazy. Regardless of you're an, you're an athlete or you're just some guy, like having part of your wrist shaved off is pretty wild. Joe, um, would you allow a doctor yeah. or a surgeon to shave part of your wrist if it allowed you to continue dishing sports takes every day? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What about you? Would? Okay. I feel like it has to be the, like, like Kirloff needed to use his wrist to, you know, hit the baseball. Right. I think with Judd, right. you need to give, like, shave part of your throat or, like, you have, you have to, like, it has to be something with, with, like, the face or the mouth to, like. Cut your nose off. Well, Kirloff had the problem, though, of, of the, the bone was causing, happen. the bone was causing problems, right? Like yeah. yeah, it was like, like a last ditch effort. Pitchers who, who have thoracic outlet syndrome, right. and they've got yeah. to take the rib out or something. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, if I couldn't talk, and they were like, "Okay, we'll just shave that off," then yeah, I guess I would shave have it part done. of your tongue off. Um, so wow. actually, so it, it was the second surgery that he had on his wrist, the one that was the most recent, um, where he first pondered retirement. Mm. He first wow. thought, "Do I want to do this um, forever?" And it really wasn't certain for him that he was going to walk away until until about a few weeks ago. So he he has he has he thought about it during the rehab this last summer with with the back injury. Um, it was it was he, he thought of it, but it really didn't come full circle. I think for him until a few weeks back, and I think the. The concern is from Rocco or maybe the twin side. Rocco, by the way, wasn't on this call. I, I asked Alex what was a conversation like with Rocco. You know, remember Rocco dealt with a barrage of very random injuries too and, and, and nerve injuries and just had to a, had a end his career prematurely um, in a similar fashion, not in the same as Alex's. Uh, but they didn't want him to be rushed and forced into a decision when you're, I mean, yes, he's 26. He turns 27 next week. Yeah. First round pick. Um, but I That's think crazy. the the amount of injuries took a toll on him. And I remember talking to Rocco about this in the summer, I think post when he was uh, went on the injured list, that there becomes a point with certain ball players where once your body has been like mangled legitimately, his wrist has been shaved off. He has a back injury update that I'll give an injury uh, update on here shortly. He's had a shoulder, you know, reconstructed. You just are no longer the same person that was drafted 16th overall and was a highly touted prospect. So yeah. I do respect the decision, I think, from Alex to just realize I'm, I'm not going to put my body through this anymore. And that makes perfect sense, too, because like if you are, I mean, th this kid was definitely, I, I think the one calling card was a gifted uh, uh, bat, like oh, as yeah. A hitter he was a gifted hitter so you know with the wrist thing and the back thing it probably got to a point where he felt like he couldn't play uh you know in any way shape or form like he did previously so it makes perfect sense it's it's unfortunate it's sad and it does continue what feels like a long line of twins and i mean i think it's bad luck i don't think it's anything to, to do with with like doctors or it just feels like there's yeah. now such a long line of twins whose careers have been derailed by by various ailments that are, you know, I mean, but Byron Buxton, I don't think anyone did a thing wrong, but you know, we're always going to look back at that dude's career and say, what if, right? Yeah. This is one on a smaller scale because he, he didn't get to the success at the, in the big leagues that, uh, that Buxton did. But I mean, Kirloff, his first game, his first debut in the major yep. leagues was in a playoff game against the Astros. And he immediately got a hit. And you said to yourself, that swing is special. So it's a shame. He was 
so first round pick as Declan mentioned, but five years ago he had risen in the minor leagues MLB pipelines prospect rankings to number nine in all of baseball in in the prospect rankings. He was the ninth best prospect in all of baseball heading into the 2019 season. Baseball America had him 15th in 2019, 31st in 2020, and then 18th in 2021. I mean, he was, we talk about like what Miguel Sano and he was a top 10 prospect in Buxton. And I mean, Kirilov, especially going into his age 27 season, was supposed to be, if not for the injuries, one of the absolute pillar figures of this organization. And it's it's kind of amazing in baseball how we sit here and we wring our hands and gnash our teeth over trade deadline and off and payroll and all this different stuff, rightfully so, mind you. But how much different would this franchise be if nothing else changed at all? Like all the mistakes, all of the good the the good fortune, the bad fortune, everything. If the only things you changed were Alex Kirloff is the stud that he was going to be five years ago and healthy, and Byron Buxton plays 140 games every year, this yeah. franchise would be. And I would, you could, if you wanted to add, like Royce Lewis doesn't deal with right. 15 different injuries and ailments and, and things like that. If you, if those three guys are just healthy and ready to rock and are the central core of this organization, yep. how much different is it? I'm even I'm even just looking at the 2019 prospect rankings that Kirloff was on there. So Kirloff was ninth, and this is all the baseball. So he was ninth, like Phil said. Royce was fifth. Vlad Guerrero was one. Tatis was two. Eloy Jimenez was three. Victor Robles was was fourth. You had wow. Bo Bichette, who was 11th. Kyle Tucker was eighth. Mackenzie Gore, 15th. Kopech, who now finally, of course, goes to the Dodgers and realizes his potential, uh, was 18th. D- uh, Dylan Cease, 21st. So like that... That class, that yeah. entire era was loaded. And now we're seeing, you know, I just listed probably guys that are all in the top 25 to 50 best players in baseball right now. Um, but it, it is unfortunate to answer Phil's question of just like, my God, they have finally built up their prospect pool. Like, I mean, those Phil was there for those beat days in the early 10s where that prospect pool was barren and they had to build it back up. And now once again, the Twins prospect ranking is still really damn good uh, heading into 2025 and beyond. But it is just like, come on, why, why can't why can't Alex Kirloff turn into Kyle Kyle Tucker, right? And I think that's what's so like frustrating with Twins fans. And it's not just ineffectiveness; it's also bad right. luck. I, yeah. I think it's one thing if you just flame out, like if you come up and you're not good, because that's sort of baseball, right? Like there's a lot of prospects that come up and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, but in the Twins case, we're we are talking about the unknowns, and we're also talking about it feels like either random or weird injuries. Like, like how many guys end up ha- having a bone in their wrist shaved off? Yeah. You know, it's not a, I don't think it's high with Buxton. It's like, how many ways can a guy get hurt? Royce Lewis, I think the first ACL tear was slipping on ice in Dallas. Yeah. So like, it's, it's not just the, okay, they got up and they just weren't the player and mistakes were made or whatever. It is these unknowns that 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 haunt the twins because to phil's point yeah i mean let's just say that royce gets hurt and kirloff still retires but let's say buxton can play 150 per year in his prime with his speed intact completely yeah he, he'd be an mv he would have won an mvp award yeah, exactly yeah. i mean he's exactly. that type of player uh I, i'm pretty sure too that alex kirloff was terry ryan's last first round pick from that second stint, because that 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 would have been the June the 2016 June draft, and uh, it was later that summer that they parted ways with with yep. Terry Ryan. So, yep. right. um, yeah, I mean, like the, the instincts were right; they nailed it. And man, you look at Alex Kirilov, you forget how great he was coming up through their system. He was so his his breakout season in the minors, like a, low A and high A, back in 2018, which put him into the top 10 in prospect rankings. He had nearly a 1,000 OPS over 130 games. He had 71 extra base hits in 561 plate appearances. Extra base hits, not counting the yeah, you know, 100 ball. singles or whatever. I mean, he was a pure hitter with power, and every ailment and surgery just, like, took a chunk out of who he was as a player. And, it, yeah, it is sad, man. It is, it is sad. Uh, a couple other things from the call that um... – 
I, I glean. So he's dealing with the, the back injury right now. And I'm going to try to say this correctly. It's lower lumbar spondyly, spondylothesis, spondylothesis. I, I had to, hand. I had to like Not Google the pronunciation. And then thankfully the Google was like, oh, you're an idiot. You can't spell. Here's what it is. Um, it's a I think chronic, nailed it. I think he nailed it. Chronic stress fracture in his back. And it's his, he has a slipping vertebrae in his L3 and L4 region. Oh. This type of injury, Ooh. Alex said, literally takes six months to a year to get your spine back to normal. So, like, you can see why a guy yeah. is 26, 27, and look, and look, ACLs and blowing out your knee, like, that stinks. When you're talking about, in my opinion, the head or the spine, yeah. like, th that's, that is life. That is future. That is your entire life ahead of you. Like, I completely get why it is not worth it. And, and when he was rehabbing, that's when he was thinking about it this summer of, like, it gets to a point where is this worth all the, all the stress, all the surgeries, all the rehab, all the resets that you have to do. And that's why he was, he's at peace. That's what he, his exact direct quote was, I'm at peace with this decision, knowing yeah. all this information. So does like, he, oh, go ahead, Judd. Oh, I, I was, so he got sent down by the twins. Was that in July Dex? And then he was, da he was down, but then he said, my back still hurts, which clearly we now know why. Was, was there confusion about that being, better at that point because like when you describe that that does not sound like something that a person could be playing through if memory serves right so when when they sent him and i believe it was june they okay. sent him down in june he played like two games with the saints okay. and because um he you know the saints are just down the street and you know most most twins players by the way when they're rehabbing um they actually still are in the facility at target field and, and roaming around uh and he came back like three days later and was on the IL and said, yeah, I, I have a back injury and I didn't tell you guys about it. And that's, I think we had a big conversation us three did about it, how oh, okay. he basically didn't report an injury. And there was disappointment, obviously, from the coaching and medical side of, dude, if you're hurt, it's one thing to say I can play through something. It's another thing to say you are dealing with a significant back injury. Yeah. Uh, you have to be much more frontal with that. Um, and that's where I think Rocco and the staff currently and everyone around him is agent. Uh, I'm sure Derek Falvey as well are, are we're really wanting to make sure that Alex was making the correct decision about his future. And I mean, when, when he lays out this chronic stress factor and his vertebrae is literally bleeped up, I understand where he's like, yeah, I'm, even though I probably could still have some years in me, I, I'm going to walk away from this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gets to a point where, you sign up as a you don't have to worry about these issues until you're no. in your 30s usually and uh, you sign up to play baseball and the th things that you would usually be worrying about in the off season are tweaks to your swing or your conditioning or whatever it may be and he's like waking up every day with three or four major ailments every year just trying to figure out how can I I mean it would be depressing quite frankly so totally. yeah um, okay before we get to twins on the grid here baseball we have a World Series champion. The Dodgers came back, and uh, they hung five unearned runs on the Yankees in the fifth inning, I believe it was. Uh, what is Judd's baseball take of the day? All right, my baseball take of the day is off the field, in the press box, in the broadcast booth. It's time. Joe Davis, really good. Uh, he's the voice of... The Dodgers now took over when Vin Scully uh, retired a few years back. Uh, and I really like him. I think he's really good. I think he captures big moments perfectly. Uh, I also think that he doesn't hype up everything, which I like. But it's time for John Smoltz to go. Oh, wow. John Smoltz. Um, there's just, and, and it's not because he's terrible. There's a couple things. One is, I don't need the tone of your voice to tell me that the current game bugs you oh, constantly, God, it's, it's but it, it never ends with Smolds. Yeah. Um, he's got to be around my age. I, you would think he's 75. Like, like, like yeah. you would think that he's, he's like mid fifties. He's yeah. Not, he's my age and you would think that he's 75, but here's the thing about why it's time. There's just better choices now. Like baseball. Again, it's a baseball thing. I feel like baseball drags its feet, right? Like Tim McCarver was do was the analyst on the World Series forever. Um, and there were probably better choices, but we've always had Tim McCarver. Well, now it's Smoltz. 
And Fox did change their booth around a lot for a while. But you know what I want? I want the analyst. There's a lot of good, young, very mm-hmm. curious, uh, very with the times baseball guys. I, I mean, our guy Ploof is, you know, totally frustrated by certain things, but not the game itself. He doesn't hate the game now. Yeah. Um, AJ Przinsky. I, I know that that name is a lightning rod here, but I really like what he brings on games. I want somebody who doesn't detest where baseball has gone. And John Smoltz clearly does. Yeah. And look, I'm sure that, you know, Jack Morris clearly did. I don't need that. <laughs> and I'm an old guy. Yeah. Well, it, it is, but it's not because it's like chasing people away who might dip in. You're so, like part of this is like you're marketing. It's a TV show. Yes. You're marketing your product to some extent, and to have someone, I, I would even, I would go extreme. I would be an ageist about this because baseball has a young audience problem. That's my. That's the World Series did say, yeah. pretty damn good numbers. You know, you needed the LA and the New York right. teams being in it. Right. But you really need someone who's like in their late 30s, maybe 40 that loves the current game and can exude that excitement and through understands the TV. it and understand yeah. like like john smoltz is fighting back because he doesn't have any comprehension of where the game has has gone as far as pitching moves is right so i want somebody i, I mean ploof on our show is the prime example because he'll criticize he gets frustrated by things, but he understands the heart of why the move was made. And from there, he criticizes it. He's just not like, well, no one can bunt today, I guess, Joe. So, yeah. so yes, I, I think the ages thing is spot on because you want young fans. I mean, baseball still has a lot of good. It's frustrating, but it is a lot of good to offer. But having old guy yelling at clouds in booth does not help anybody. So it's just time. <laughs> His uh his disdain for the pitch clock in the I think yeah. it was the ALD or the NLDS I think or maybe the wild card series with the Dodgers or Padres like he was just beside himself that the pitcher got called just for like two minutes. Also, I I, I had to look it up to confirm because I didn't know this. That dude is a one and a half handicap golfer. He is an unbelievable golfer. John Smoltz is. Go golf. He's even he's golfing like nine PGA Tour events. Yeah, I think he's on the senior open yeah. sometime. Like, go golf. That brave staff deck was great. Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz. I think, I think I think they were correct. all but but no, but oh. that starting staff, they were all like great golfers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But anyway, it's just time. And it, I'm not even saying that as trying to be a jerk. I just think that the game, I look at the people available and I'm like, there's a lot of people who would be really, really good and would embrace it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. We should put together. I mean, hell, like the John Boy staff should put together a search or something and help help Fox and help these networks just cater to. This is why Jeff Van Gundy got let go from ESPN. Mm-hmm. I actually kind of love Jeff Van Gundy because he I was agree. entertaining and he would. Right. But like everything was catered to how crappy the game is and how dumb the coaches are and everything. And at some point, you just like I just want to watch and be entertained and excited i don't need to be told how by the way the pitch clock has been great for baseball exactly and the pitch clock is here to stay so either stop complaining about it right or we can find someone who's not crusty and you know 57 going on 100 years old john smoltz and you can still criticize a ton of things like in-game moves and stuff like like it's not like well you can't you shouldn't because okay. oh yeah totally yeah you know because yep. the kiss ass stuff drives me crazy but you are, he fundamentally hates the game. Yeah. By the way, uh, Garrett Cole, what, like, what on earth? The whole inning for the Yankees. But, like, what is he doing? I don't know. How are you not running and over Rizzo and covering like, first base? And, and Rizzo, R- Rizzo could have made more of an effort to dive head first, and that was wild. And then the Aaron Judge dropped fly ball in center field before that. Like, oh. How much do you guys think Twins fans enjoyed the Yankees meltdown? Because it was very Twins-like against the Yankees, I, what we saw from the Yankees against the Dodgers. I personally, whether it's like Vikings-Packers or whatever, I don't get... I get enjoyment out of Jimmy Butler getting clowned. So there are some things I get enjoyment out of. not play against the Wolves here anymore. Well, he got clowned last night by Cat. Cat had one of the great games of his career. Oh, against, I saw the stat. I didn't see that. It was against the Heat. Yep. Good. Good for I think you. Jimmy Butler was playing. If not, he had a front-row seat to it. Good for but, um, like... The Yankees 
giving up five unearned runs has no impact on like I think it's kind of funny, but as from like a twins perspective, I don't okay. like get jo- I personally don't get joy yeah. from like a twins perspective out of it. I just I think it's amusing from just a a baseball perspective. That's I don't know. Maybe you guys disagree. I I found myself upset that the New York Yankees blew a five run lead in the World Series, and I can't believe that even like ten year ten years ago, Declan would be upset by that fact. Yeah, I, I want to upset. see a game six. Me too. Me too. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. So I'm with Dex. I was I was more that. annoyed that like they deprived well, us of a game six, yeah. maybe a game seven, by being idiots in the field. But they were so, and and yeah, Garrett Cole not covering, and and he came off the mound like he was going. I I think that that caused confusion because at first he came off the mound and then he just stopped. Yeah, it was a very bizarre play. Super weird, man. So. Uh, so the Dodgers are your world champions. We've got hot stove season. To fit. Hey, Juan Soto did tell reporters after the game, one of the premier free yeah. agents in baseball history, I am open for all 30 teams. There's and a, free- uh, Give me a call. And that starts when now? Five, five, six days? Technically five days. From five the day, I mean, so we are going to have in five days, we're going to have a slew of um, somethings. There's yeah. a uh, tier right now on the athletics uh, on the athletic of destinations for him. And, you know, tier one's the Yankees. Tier 1A is the Mets. All the way at the bottom. Tier five, it's just tier five, colon, not happening. And it's four of the five AL Central teams, plus <laughs> the Reds, Pirates, Brewers, Diamondbacks, Rockies, A's, Rays, Marlins. Oh, it's hilarious. Not happening. The race should just do it, man. Screw it. <laughs> For the only time in your franchise history. I know you got to repair that roof. I was going to say, where are the Rays going to play? We still don't know where they're going to play their home games yeah. to start next season. Judd, do you still have time for Twins on the Grid here? I know you have recording. You have Judd's hockey oh, show. You're win. good? Yeah. Okay, okay. Baseball. All right, Twins are on the Grid here a couple days ago. And uh, Dex will pop this up for the YouTube audience. We will explain it for the Apple, Spotify, slash audio audience. And I think we we, we might be able wins. to put twins on all nine of these. Yes, Let's... I think we can. Nice. So we're looking for a twin who was a Ray, a twin who was a White Sox, and a twin who played catcher at least once. Mm-hmm. And then we're looking for... A ranger who was a ray, a ranger who was a white sock, and a ranger who caught at least a game. And then we're looking for a player born outside of the 50 states in D.C. who was a ray, a white sock, and a catcher. And it'd be great if if we could just find twins for all nine of these and also right. get a, a low rarity score. So, sports dad, where do you want to start? What square? Let's start with let's start with um, Texas. And the White Sox. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's start with that one. What are you thinking? Mm. Oh, uh, so Roy two Smalley? guys come to mind. Yeah, Roy, yeah Might Roy be Smalley. high, but Lance yeah. Lynn, that yeah. might be high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, A.J. Pierzynski would work for either of these two squares. He yeah. went nope. to Texas. I, I think Roy Smalley, very oh. briefly a White Sox, is a great call. And then, yeah, and then we could fill in another one. Yeah, Roy, Roy Smalley. Smalley. I mean, that's back in the day now, and I, he's not remembered as a White Sox at all. Bart twin he's Yankee. A, well, Ranger, White Sox, Yankee, drafted Twin. Drafted by the Rangers, yeah. Was there a fifth team? He played for a fifth team? No, he, no, he came back to the Twins. Four. Okay. Twins twice. Oh, Roy boy. Smalley? Yeah, that's Roy a good Smalley. One. Oh, God, there's two Roy Smalleys. Didn't you know that? His Wait. dad. Uh, yeah, Roy Smalley. Roy Smalley senior. We want the younger one. There we go. Oh, yeah, Point two, let's go. Look at that good-looking young man. So yeah, for the for the Rangers catcher, so who was also a twin, a Mitch Garver. Oh, Garv sauce. He's yep. super recent though, but I mean AJ's probably the and AJ's not remembered at all as a, there. So I think that's Did, a good uh, one too. Buterin never went there. No. Redmond never went there. Um, Matt Wal- no, Matt Wal- Wahlbeck was an there. angel. I think Przinsky's good. That's you, AJ. I, I think AJ is a good call there. Again, not a lot of options. as a ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Point eight. Oh yeah. Point, eight. point eight. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Nice Let's call. Go. Let's go. Um, Matt Gar. This might be a little high, but Garza. Yeah. yeah. He was a long time Ray, so that might be on their minds. Um, Carlos Gomez also played for both those Go-Go teams. Would, he did. He did he go to Tampa. Tampa and oh. Texas. I know he went to Texas. I know he went to Tampa. He's a 
classic Tampa player, try to rekindle a, a career. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, uh, good call. Garza, Garza Gomez. I mean, Tampa's not. What are they, 92? It's 97? Six. Oh, 97. Okay, God. 98. 98. Oh, 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 God, then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I if you want to go Garza, go-go. Garza, go-go. I think Garza's identified, to Declan's point, more with Tampa. Yeah, than... I think if you're good with – if you're if I don't remember Carlos Gomez as a yeah, Ray. sure? But, yeah. I mean, I'm like 95% sure. Yeah, there's, good enough for me. there's always okay. There's always a chance. If you want to save it for the end, just for drama. Let's save it for the end. Okay. I'll make a note here. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Just for drama. Um, okay, let's do the, let's knock these twin. Oh, twin, pitchers. twin Ray. Pitchers. We've used Jepson for this. Kevin Jepson's Grant Ball, four pitch one. for uh... Forsyth. We've used Forsyth, Oda Rizzi, um, Balf, uh, Grant Balfour. Yeah, Grant uh, Balfour. For, but he would also work for. He's Australian. Right. He, uh, oh, he was born oh. outside the U.S. All right, mate. If you want to throw him in the Ray, gotcha. Fernando Rodney, um, also born uh, outside the U.S. C.J. Crone, right? Yep. C.J. Yep. Crone was a Ray. Yep. That, well, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Yeah, go. Let's do CJ Crone. Go Crone there, and then ball four. Yeah. CJ Crone. On, on the next one. Point seven. Point seven. That's higher than I thought, actually. Boston yeah. Cap. God, he's played for a lot of teams. Yeah. And, and then, then ball, ball four, four yeah. for the Perfect. Ray born outside. B A L F. There yep. we go. Ball four. There we go. Point six. Point six. Okay. Okay. White Sox and uh, Twin go go back to the seventies. You got my my guy, what Eric Soderholm, who played third base for wow. both teams. Uh, Eduardo Escobar mm-hmm. and the Larry Lariano. Um, you could lose Lariano for our, uh, that one even. Yeah, Pedro um, Pedro Hernandez was Pedro the other guy Hernandez in the Eduardo trade. Escobar trade. Joe Creedy might be too high. Um, yeah, Creedy's going to big time White Bartolo Sox. Bartolo Colon that also might. I think Bartolo did go to the White Sox. Phil um, Umber. Phil Umber. Yeah. yeah. Remember, he threw like a perfect, perfect game, game for the White Sox, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and then he, but but he still sucked. That was pretty much it. Which, which was absolutely amazing. Um, Jim Jim Cott. Jim Cott pitched for the White yeah, Sox. Kid, Kitty Cott, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of like, uh, oh, Pelf didn't, no, Pelf went to the yeah. Tigers. Tigers. I thought he was, wasn't Sox, he White Sox too? I don't remember if it was a White Sox. Might, I think it might be might both. Have been White Sox. I think um, my guy would, is, Sod- I don't think anyone re- Remembers Eric Let's do it. Satterholm. There he yeah. is. Let's go under one percent here. Come on, one. One percent. Look at that. Old okay. school. Any catcher ever <laughs> for the Twins? Yeah. Um, I will say, uh, for recency, Jair Camargo, I believe, is uh, Colombian who played like he played like three games with the Twins. He killed Triple A pitching, but he Pin- played yeah. like three games. Pinto too, right? Hosmiel Hos- Hos- Pinto, Pinto. Would yeah. Work for this, uh, God, you're supposed to be good. Remember that? Yeah. I mean, and then we're also looking for. We just need. We could. We need one that was born outside the U.S. too. So. So Rene Pinto Ro- and Rene Rivera. Were, we're both yeah. Rene Rivera. Yeah. Let's do Hosmiel Pinto for one of them. That's super obscure. Rene- Remember that May. guy? I, kind of a weird guy. Oh, Hosmo Pinto. Hosmo Pinto. Yeah. 2013. Hosmo, sorry about that. Uh, there he is. Here we go. Point two. Yeah. And then uh, either, well, Camargo is going to be low on this square, right? No one's, yeah, no one's going yeah, no to like, yeah. remember it. That's a good one. Okay. Point zero seven. seven. So we have two squares left. Yep. We've got uh, White Sock, born outside the U.S., who is also a twin. Yep. And then a Ray Ranger, who was also a twin. Liriano. So this is where you could use Eduardo Escobar, Escobar Francisco Liriano, yep. Pedro Hernandez. Pedro Hernandez. This is going to shape up to be a great... It- Carlos Gomez now is going to be really... Watch it be wrong. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't hit, there will be controversy for days. You want to go Pedro Hernandez? I mean, he's going to be lower than Liriano, right? Yeah. Old Pedro. Oh, my God. Point oh, that's oh, a... oh, nine. I don't think I've ever seen that. I that's not. hilarious. So we're like the only ones who've guessed him, probably. It had to have to be, yeah. Wow. Okay, so so what are we at now? Point, we're at like one, two. We're like for sure under 4% right now. Oh, God. Yeah. And, uh, well, who are, well, Carlos Gomez, I feel like Matt you gotta Garza. The, I feel like you got to pull the trigger on Gomez. Go, go. I feel like it has to happen here. 
I'll be disappointed if we don't. <laughs> Gars is going to be above one percent. Oh yeah, it'll be above one. I, Come on now. I think we got to do it. Okay. Be the club. Be the club. Yes. It was two. Let's it was go. actually the highest. Oh wow, two percent. Darn. It's a six rarity score. Nice job, dudes. Look at that. All twins. Let's go. LFG. Oh, That's very satisfying. <laughs> Wander Franco. Oy. Yeah, Nelson Cruz. Jose Canseco for. Wander, Wander Franco. Wander Franco. Ooh, boy, uh, okay. All right. Let the off season begin next week. Yep. We'll see if uh, there's any actual free agency lists. Or... Bring them to the table on Monday. We'll be going yeah. through them all we... until the Twins make several big moves in five days from now. Or not. Or not. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, Dex, let's definitely start the uh, okay. the off-season list next week. Okay. Let's do it, boys. All right, that's a wrap. The Score North Twin Show. Baseball.